Okay, so this presentation is going to be on Mendelian genetics, you know, some of the history of genetics that we learned through the work of Gregor Mendel. So let's get started. So our knowledge of gen genetics really began with this man right here, Gregor Mendel. Gregor Mendel was an Austrian monk. And today we kind of recognize him as the father of modern genetics because of his work on experimenting with pea plants. Uh, uh, this, exper this experiment with uh, pea plants lasted over seven years and he literally bred thousands and thousands of different pea plants in order to learn the basics of heredity. So Mendel experimented with seven different traits from these pea plants, one of the traits being flower colors. The flowers sometimes grew purple petals and others grew white petals. He examined the flower position, were the flowers in the terminal position at the tips of the branches or were the flowers in the axial position, you know, kind of inward on the branches. The seed color, did the seeds, uh, were, were they yellow in color or were they green in color? The texture of the seeds, did they have a smooth touch or kind of a wrinkled texture to them? The color of the pods, were the pods yellow in color or were the pods green in color? The shape of the pods, were the, were the pods kind of puffy and inflated or were they constricted? And lastly, the stem height, did the pea plants grow tall or short. So these were the seven traits that Mendel experimented with and observed. And based on his results, which we'll see in a little bit, he uncovered a pattern. And this pattern turned out to be the basics of genetics and heredity. Heredity being the passing of traits from parent to offspring. So let's talk about his work. So let's actually look at how Mendel conducted his experiment. Now we mentioned seven characteristics, but we're gonna just look at one. We're gonna look at flower color, the purple flowers versus the white flowers. So in the first generation of the experiment, also known as the P generation, the P stands for the parents, he had one parent with purple flowers and one parent with white flowers. Now he tried it both ways. In some experiments, the male had purple flowers and the female had white, and in other experiments, it was vice versa. And so what he did was he used a brush. He used a brush to transfer pollen from the male flower over to the female flower. The female flower grew seeds. He collected the seeds and he planted them in the garden. And when the seeds grew, they became the F1 generation or the first generation after the parents. So in the F1 generation of, of Mendel's experiment, 100% of the offspring grew purple flowers. Now that's kind of interesting, considering one of the parents had white flowers. So what Mendel learned is that some traits are dominant and some traits are recessive. Notice how the white trait was hidden or covered. This is the recessive trait. And purple is the dominant trait because it appears to be hiding the expression of the white. So now Mendel moves on with his experiment. He allowed the plants of the F1 generation to self-pollinate. He transferred pollen from the male parts to its own female parts. Plants often have male and female parts and can pollinate themselves. And so then he collected the seeds of the F1 generation, grew them in his garden, and allowed them to grow. And this became the F2 generation. And what he noticed as the flowers grew was for every three that had purple flowers, one would have white. So 75% grew purple flowers, 25% grew white. And so what Mendel uncovered is that offspring don't always resemble their parents. Notice the parents of the F1 generation were all purple, and yet 25% of the F2 generation had white flowers. He also noticed that traits can skip generations. Notice how the presence of white flowers was skipped in the F1 generation. Well, this is because white is recessive. Now, Mendel examined, again, seven total traits. And so for flower color, here are his, here's his data. He counted 705 plants with purple flowers, 224 plants with white flowers. So as we said a moment ago, for every three that grew purple flowers, one grew white. This is a three to one ratio. 
For the other traits, he counted 6,022 plants with yellow seeds and 2,001 with green seeds, again a 3 to 1 ratio. When he examined the height of the stem, 787 with tall stems, 277 with short stems, again almost a 3 to 1 ratio. When he examined the pod color, 428 plants had green pods, 152 had yellow pods, again almost a 3 to 1 ratio. When he examined the texture of the seeds, 5,474 with smooth, 1,850 with wrinkled, again almost a 3 to 1 ratio. When he examined the shape of the pods, 882 with inflated pods, 299 with constricted pods, almost a 3 to 1 ratio. And then for flower position, 705 flower, uh, plants with flowers in the terminal position, 224 in the axial position, almost a 3 to 1 ratio. Notice the pattern. He figured there has to be a mathematical explanation for it, and you'll see what that is in just a few moments. And as a result of Mendel's work here, there is what is now known as Mendel's Laws. Remember this experiment here? Using a painter's brush, he transferred pollen from a flower that had purple petals. He transferred pollen to a female with white petals. And 100% of the F1 generation was purple. So this is what is known as the Law of Dominance. Purple appears to be dominant to white. Purple is preventing the expression of white. So this is the Law of Dominance is that uh, genes can be dominant and recessive. Another law that Mendel's work uncovered is what is known as the law of independent assortment. And that just says that genes are sorted independent of one another. Therefore, if the flower, there was no connection between the flower color and the seed texture. The pod color had nothing to do with the seed color. The seed color had nothing to do with the texture. And so all of these different traits were independent of one another. And then finally, the law of segregation. Offspring inherit one gene copy from each parent, but we all have two parents. So that means we have two copies of every gene in our DNA. For instance, the purple flower on the left has two copies of the purple gene. On the right, the white flower has two copies of the white gene. But the offspring in the middle receives one from each parent. This is the law of segregation. The genes are segregated during uh, chromosome uh, uh, formation and during the process of meiosis and the formation of eggs and sperms. So this is the law of segregation, is that the offspring only inherit one copy from each parent. So as we go through our genetics unit, we need to understand some vocabulary. And one of the most important words would be the word an allele, an alternate form of a gene. You know, for instance, in flower color, the gene for flower color comes in two forms. Form number one can be purple and form number two can be white. So there's two forms of this gene. You know, the gene for pod color comes in two forms, one form green, one form yellow. There's an allele for green, there's an allele for yellow. You know, for human blood type, there's actually three alleles that determine the human blood type. You know, one per, you might have an A allele, you might have a B allele, you might also have an O allele. And so the combination of alleles that we inherit determine our blood type. And so alleles make up our genotype. Now we have two parents, and so we get a, an allele, one allele from mom and one allele from dad. The combination of those two alleles determines our genotype. So if in the animation here, the offspring just received a dominant purple allele from the parent on the left and a dominant purple allele from the parent on the right. And because purple was dominant, notice how I use capital letters. Capital letters are used to represent dominant alleles. And anytime you, uh, an individual inherits two dominant alleles, one from the mother, one from the father, we call this combination homozygous dominant. Well, what about uh, if you were to look at a white flowered example? Remember, white was a recessive color. So we're using lowercase letters now. So in this case, the parent on the left just passed on a recessive allele 
to the offspring, and now the parent on the right is passing on a recessive allele to the offspring. If you inherit two recessive alleles, this combination is called homozygous recessive. And so then the only other possibility is, what if you receive a dominant allele from one parent and a recessive allele from the other parent? Remember, purple was dominant, so I'm going to use a capital letter for purple. And white was recessive, so I'm going to use a lowercase letter for white. So the offspring has inherited a dominant and a recessive allele. This combination is known as heterozygous. So the, this genotype is known as heterozygous. So there are three possible genotypes. A person or a, an individual can inherit two dominant alleles. That's called that genotype is called homozygous dominant. An individual can inherit one dominant and one recessive allele. That's called heterozygous. And an individual can inherit two recessive alleles. That's called homozygous recessive. Now, another vocabulary word we need to understand is the word phenotype, the physical expression of a gene. Notice how there are two, two of the three options are for the color purple. Purple is the phenotype. Notice how all it takes is one dominant allele to show the color purple, because purple is dominant and white is recessive. And so the phenotype for the bottom option, the phenotype for lowercase p, lowercase p, would be white. So again, the phenotype is what is physically expressed. In this case, purple flowers and white flowers are physically expressed. Okay, so here is a few review questions. You know, you have 10 choices. Pause the video and see how many of these choices apply to number one, and then how many apply to number two, and how many apply to number three. I'm going to go over the answers in three, two, one. Okay, so for number one, which choices are genotypes? I hope you said the answers of one, three, five, six, seven, and 10. All the letter combinations are genotypes. For number two, which choices are heterozygous genotypes? Well, there's only two answers, number three and number six. Now, typically you put the capital letter first, but anytime there's a combination of one dominant and one recessive allele, that's a heterozygous genotype. And then number three, which choice or choices are phenotypes? I hope you said two, four, eight, and nine. The physical descriptions are phenotypes. So now I want to show you how we can use Mendel's work in solving Punnett squares. Punnett squares, if you recall, are genetic tools that we use to predict offspring probability. And in middle school, when you've done Punnett squares, remember they kind of look like this, four squares to fill in. And so let's show you how to set up a Punnett square. So the genotype of the parents we're going to place on the outside of the Punnett square. And remember in this example, where we had a purple and a white uh, P generation. The parent, one parent was purple flowers, one parent had white flowers. And 100% of the F1 generation had uh, purple flower petals. This is because purple was dominant and white was recessive. But I want to show you how we can mathematically explain this in a Punnett square. The way that Menvil bred his peas, he was confident that the purple the purple parent of the P generation was pure or homozygous dominant. And also the white parent was pure or homozygous recessive. So the first thing we do is we put these uh, genotypes on the outside of the Punnett square. The next thing we do is we simply fill in each of the four squares with the letters. And once we do, we're going to have a genotype inside each of the four Punnett squares. Inside the squares, this represents the offspring's genotype. And notice the square in the top left is going to grow purple flowers. The square in the top right is going to grow purple flowers. The square in the lower left will grow purple flowers. The square in the lower right will grow purple flowers. 100% of those uh, of those Punnett squares are going to go purple because they have a purple dominant allele inside. That matches the observation that Mendel obtained 
in his experiments. And then if you recall, then if you recall in the F2 generation, 75% grew purple flowers and 25% grew white flowers. So let's see if we can mathematically explain this with a Punnett square. So if you recall, this is where he, they, the plants were self-pollinated. So pollen was transferred to the female part of the same flower. That means both parents were heterozygous, capital P, lowercase p. And so when we fill in the Punnett square, I hope you'll see how we can mathematically explain the results that Mendel obtained. The Punnett square in the upper left is going to grow purple flowers because the purple dominant alleles are possessed in that Punnett square. In the top right, they will also grow purple flowers. The lower left, purple flowers. Notice the only one that does not grow purple flowers is the square in the lower right hand corner. So three squares out of four or 75% of the squares will grow purple flowers and 25% will grow, grow white flowers. This is exactly what Mendel discovered in his experiments. Okay, so here's a practice problem that I want you to try to solve. Pause the video try to solve it, I'm going to go over the answers in three, two, one. So the story says one parent is heterozygous yellow and the other parent is homozygous recessive green. So now I can fill in my Punnett squares and from the inside of the Punnett squares I can use the results to answer questions one, two, three, and four. So for number one, list the offspring genotypes. Well notice how two of them are heterozygous and two of them are homozygous recessive. For number two, list the offspring phenotypes. Phenotypes are what we physically see. So two out of the four squares would grow yellow, two out of the four squares would grow green. For number three, what's the probability of growing a homozygous dominant plant? The answer is zero. Homozygous dominant in this Punnett square does not exist. That would be two capital Ys. There are no squares with two capital Ys. And number four, what's the probability of growing yellow seeds? In this Punnett square, the answer is 50%. And so there you have it. Uh, if you're in my biology class, you know, pause the video, try to answer these questions, and I'm happy to check your answers before school or after school. And, uh, you know, leave your comments in the box below. I hope you found this video helpful.